I got to give this shout out and, and talk about our good friends over at the Young Turks because we have this uh, we have this video <laughs> they posted back on February 8th. And it says Tim Pool makes the dumbest January 6th argument yet. Oh, this is just uh, it feels so good to uh, so uh, there's, there's so much to bring up in terms of cultural politics and, and politics here that this exemplifies. I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of the story. For those that aren't familiar, just to go back to our previous segment in January, I had made the point that at the Capitol, many people were let in the building by the police, that there were no barricades. They'd been torn down and people walked up. Cops were fanning them in. Doors were being opened for them. How could you charge someone with trespass if they were welcomed into a building? Certainly that makes no sense, right? And so taking that out of context, some Twitter guy takes a clip of it, the Young Turks doing no research, run the clip of it while smack talking me saying I'm wrong and saying really dumb, poor legal arguments like if there's broken glass on the ground, it's trespassing. I think I think Jenk may have said that where they're like, I'm just going to walk over this broken glass and that means I'm allowed in. And it's like, it doesn't mean you're not allowed in. Broken yeah. glass is not a you know, trespassing sign. Like imagine going to a McDonald's and there's a, a broken window. It's like, ah, I guess I can't come into McDonald's. Someone broke the window. No, that's, that's not how it works. So they run this segment. And uh, I am proud to say now that uh, we have been absolutely vindicated, proven right. Judge issues the first outright acquittal of a defendant charged over the January, January 6th right. We did just uh, mention this in a previous segment. But here's the best part. I tweeted how, how it started, how it's going with that clip from the Young Turks with the new article that c- comes out showing this guy's been acquitted. And I said, hey, Jen, Anna, I was right. And their response is Anna responded on Twitter as if the news didn't come out. She just <laughs> repeated the exact same false premise on my argument while ignoring the fact that even her false premise. So so I said the writers are going to go to jail. The violent people go to jail. She's claiming that I'm saying the writers themselves will be acquitted because there's no signs, which is a gross exaggeration of my point. But the guy was acquitted. This is what they do. So I think it's a really great uh, um, ex- ex- example of what, what the culture war is. I make a, an observation based on a legal theory. We'll see what happens. I'm proven right. The Young Turks double down, ignore the facts, and just keep lying. Well, you know, it raises the philosophical question. If you've been insulted by the Young Turks, have you, in fact, been insulted? I think. <laughs> uh, but, 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 you know, this is actually, the Young Turks are just a, the small version of this. This is happening everywhere the other day. And Applebaum of the Washington Post, a, a, once a fine journalist, she was, used to be an actually good uh, writer and journalist, she was approached by a freshman from the University of Chicago who said to her, well, how do you feel now? about the fact that the Joe Biden laptop has turned out to be true after it was kicked off Twitter. It was suppressed by the news. And she said, oh, that's a boring story. I don't care about that. So I thought, well, here's a story that really does implicate the president of the United States in influence peddling. And she's bored. She's bored by that. She's bored. It's not interesting. They shared bank accounts. Yeah. We've got more data from the laptop reportedly coming out soon. When she says it was a boring story, she's lying. But, mm-hmm. And no, no, no talk about bingo. Yeah. It's well, boring because it requires know if you know glucose this. to change your mind. Cognitive dissonance requires a lot of energy <laughs> yeah. to override. Well, I, I don't know if you know this, but even though we know now that the information on the laptop is is true and legitimate, it wasn't true back then. <laughs> oh, okay. well, yeah. that, that explains it. So I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry you act. were misinformed about this, <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't true mm-hmm. at the time. Think about the historical record, right? So if you pull up stories from, you know, uh, October 2020, you will learn about Russian disinformation manipulating the United States. The, the story today now is that the laptop is true. There were opinion pieces, commentary, analysis, subsequent investigations, and this is the track record we get from the, these establishment crony shill press, be it Young Turks or otherwise. The Russiagate stories, they won awards for those things. All based on yes, lies. Pulitzer's. And now yeah, we know it's all well, fake. Well, yeah, Walter so, Durante, Durante won a Pulitzer for covering up the hull anymore. So here, here's, <laughs> here's, 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 the, here's what I, I want you to imagine this. You look at a history book and they have a timeline of the Donald Trump years. And it says in 2016, Donald Trump colluded with Russia to do this. In 2017, Donald Trump was investigated for colluding with Russia. And then under the premise that all of those stories are true, which make up the text of this history book, you then get to the year 2019, 2020, and it's like, well, we now know that all of the stuff was fake. So how do we go and rewrite the historical record mm-hmm. that they fabricated? You know well, what I mean? Right. No. Well, you know, but, but just just think about the, the old-fashioned idea of a reporter. Think about the guy with the hat, the snapping hat, and the press card. And his, I, I was a reporter. I was a small-town newspaper man. And you would hang around places just to see if anything suspicious was happening. So if the councilman walked into the sheriff's office, you immediately thought, 
what's going on there? What is happening here? So here they have a laptop that connects the president to his dishonest, you know, influence peddling son. And it's like, I'm bored. I, you know, I, what, really what else bored. is on TV? Is, you know, is, is Netflix on? Because I, you know, I don't want to. I'd, <laughs> I'd like to imagine there was a time where the laptop story would come out. And every major news organization would be like, guys, 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 get on this. We've got evidence of direct corruption involving a president. Instead, they were like, oh, no, how do we lie to protect him?